Good morning. Is God still reaching out to King Zedekiah to get him to try to help him to turn and do what's right? As we follow the book of Jeremiah through chronologically, that takes us now to chapter 34, and we're going to look today at verses 1 to 7 of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 34. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army, all the kingdoms of the earth under his dominion, and all the people fought against Jerusalem and all its cities, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape from his hand, but shall surely be taken and delivered into his hand. Your eyes shall see the eyes of the king of Babylon. He shall speak with you face to face, and you shall go to Babylon. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord concerning you, You shall not die by the sword, you shall die in peace, as in the ceremonies of your fathers, the former kings who were before you. So they shall burn incense for you and lament for you, saying, Alas, Lord, for I have pronounced the word, says the Lord. Then Jeremiah the prophet spoke all these words to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in Jerusalem. When the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem and all the cities of Judah that were left, against Lashish and Ezekiah, for only these fortified cities remained of the cities of Judah. So these events occurred near the beginning of the final siege of Jerusalem. And they happened while Jeremiah was still free, because as we'll soon see in Jeremiah chapter 32, this, this thing that Jeremiah says, this is what got him imprisoned uh, by the king. So he wasn't very happy about this, but that's still coming up. God is, appears to be trying to get Zedekiah to change his approach. He's trying to get him to relent from his his a disregard for Babylon, God has told him, you need to come under and, and work with, you need to be under the yoke of Babylon. And his advisors and all the rich people in the kingdom of Judah are telling Zedekiah, no, 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 no. And so Zedekiah is going along with the movers and shakers around there. He's bowing to their will and he's in rebellion against Babylon. God said, no, don't you dare. And so Zedekiah is having a lot of trouble leading the people. Now, Zedekiah has gone a pretty far distance already, so he's pretty much doomed. But God is still giving him, he's trying to give him some incentive. He's saying, look, uh, when you die, the people will, will at least respect you, and they'll burn incense for you and so on when you die. They'll, they'll have a respect for you, but you need to turn. You need to not uh, do this business, this rebellion against Babylon at this time. Now, God seems pretty relentless in his attempts to get Zedekiah to turn back, and that, that leads me to think that Something in Zedekiah was there. Something was there that was responding or on the verge of responding. There was something in him that almost was able to turn, and God was really reaching for that. But he has free will, Zedekiah. And so things go pretty hard for Zedekiah. He just He's not quite there, but God is sure doing his utmost to get him there. And all this brings to mind Jesus' soul-searching question. You remember the one that he asked back in the Gospels? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a very searching question. It's not just a question for the people in Jesus' day, of course. It's a question for you and I in our day. What, would, what exchange would I make? What would I sell out my belief in Jesus, my commitments to, to Jesus for? And you might think, well, no, neither one of us would be willing to sell out, but the devil has got quite a, a long list of things I think he'd like to try. And I wonder if we're as secure as we like to think we are. We need to be completely surrendered to God, completely given over to his, his plan, ready to suffer for our belief in him. Because without that, uh, we are basically able to be bought and sold. God help us not to be bought and sold. Zedekiah is struggling with this. And we're going to see in this chapter how the struggle goes. It's time for you and I to pray. Dear Father in heaven, please help us to rightly value the eternal in relation to the material. Help us to have a clear vision to see your things as the most valuable and to be able to weigh the material things for their passing and quick nature. We should not sell our soul for any immediate thing we could have right here and now. This is our prayer today and we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So God is reaching out urgently for Zedekiah and his heart is yearning for us. He wants us to keep things in the right measure so that we'll keep our eye on the heavenly goal. God help you keep your eye on the heavenly goal this day too.